Good morning, Good morning. <clears throat> and welcome to uh, Manuel Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Mark Krieger. I'm filling in for Pastor Faulkner as he recuperates from his surgery. All I hear is that he's doing well and he's on the schedule to come back soon, and he is certainly in our thoughts and prayers. I also bring you greetings from your brothers and sisters at Christ Lutheran Church. They also keep you, Pastor Faulkner, and your school in their thoughts and in their prayers. This morning on the 10th weekend after Pentecost, we're gonna walk on water. So get your water shoes out, we're gonna see how that works, okay? Heavenly Father, on this 10th weekend after Pentecost, we're gonna see that uh, impetuous disciple, Simon Peter, open his mouth again. Not only does he open his mouth, but he gets out of the boat. Not only does he get out of the boat, he walks on water until he realizes the strength of the wind and the waves. And when he takes his eyes off of you, Jesus, that's when he has trouble. And we're also going to realize that we have trouble when we take our eyes off of you and we focus on the other things of this world. Things aren't nearly as important as our faith, our trust, and our love in you, that love that you first had for us. So it is our heartfelt prayer, Lord Jesus, that you continue to bless our hearing, singing, worshiping, and praying, all done in your holy and gracious name. In your name, we ask all of these things. Amen.
We gather together once again and we make our beginning in the name of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Please, as little Owen Mark is baptized for the first time this morning, remember how God has called and how God has claimed you in and through holy baptism. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord and Savior says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go, making disciples of all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And in the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And also the Apostle Paul writes, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches us that all of us are born and conceived with sin and so are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his very own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But their Father of all mercy and grace has sent us his one and only Son, Jesus the Christ, who is atoned for the sins of the whole world so that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. How is this child to be named? Owen Mark Zielinski. Owen Mark Zielinski. Receive the sign of the cross upon your forehead and upon your heart as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Please join us in a word of prayer. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserved believing Noah and his family, all eight souls. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea. You led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through baptism in the Jordan, your beloved son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Owen Mark Zielinski according to your boundless mercy. Bless him with the true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in him, which has been inherited from Adam and which he himself has committed since, would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he may be declared worthy of eternal life through Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now from ancient times, the Holy Christian Church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal <coughs> candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction, and nurture them in their Christian faith, and encourage them toward faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for their neighbor. As it is your intention to serve Owen Mark Zielinski as sponsors in the Christian faith, then answer yes with the help of God. Yes with the help of God. God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. He is just smiling to beat the band here. Yeah. You know, with a name like Mark, you can't, you, know, you can't get much better. I mean, even if it's a middle name, all right. We better keep going here, right? Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They were bringing young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up into his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In order to further implore our blessings of our Heavenly Father upon this child, let us all together join the prayer that Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in
Oh, and mark the Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Oh, and mark Zelensky, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Now you can all join in on that, all right? Do you renounce all his works? Yes, yes I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, we confess our faith together in the Apostolic Creed. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus the Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, and do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, Mark or Owen Mark Zelensky, do you desire to be baptized? Yes, I do. All right. Hold his little head. Who's ever going to hold little Owen? Very good. Just hold his head right over the front here. Owen Mark Zelensky, we baptize you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. He was fine until that water hit him. O oh, Almighty God, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who has given you this new birth by water and by the Holy Spirit, has forgiven all of your sins. May he con continue to strengthen you with his grace unto life everlasting. O oh, and receive this white garment placed upon you to show that you have been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all of your sin. So shall you ever stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ, to receive the inheritance prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Also receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. May you always live in the light of Christ, ever watchful for his second coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter in with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which will have no end. Owen, oh, in holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us all of all the treasures of heaven in the one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our brother in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We love you in the name of the Lord. Let us stand together for our closing prayer. And we pray, Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we just thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family, that you have granted unto your servant, Owen Mark Zelinsky, that new birth and holy baptism, that you have made him a member of your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and as such an heir of your heavenly kingdom. Now we humbly implore you that as he has become your dear child, keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow up to lead that godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain that promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Peace be with you all. Now, if you would like to face, as you are the fellow brothers and sisters of Emmanuel Lutheran Church, let us join in welcoming our newest baptized member, Owen Mark Zelinsky. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Before we corporately confess our sins together, let us pause each in his own heart and life, led by the Holy Spirit, to silently reflect upon those most inward and secretive sins. 
having been led by the Holy Spirit to confess inwardly. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we confess our sins unto God, our Father, together. Hear the good news, how Almighty God in His great mercy has given His one and only Son to die for you, and now for His sake He forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by His authority alone, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, always doing so in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. We pray, Heavenly Father, on this 10th weekend after Pentecost, you poured out your Holy Spirit on your disciples, and especially Simon Peter. He had enough faith to step out of the boat. He had enough faith until he took his eyes off of you, and his focus changed to the wind and the waves. So often, Heavenly Father, we also have enough faith until the daily struggles get the best of us. And then, in doubt, we take our eyes and our focus off of you. Continue to strengthen our faith, Heavenly Father, so that we never lose sight of you, the great I Am. In your name we pray. Amen. Listen to the word of God. The Old Testament readings is according to the oldest prophet in the Old Testament, the prophet Job. Uh, the context of this reading is, is really something 
Uh, Job has been told by his friends that he has committed a great sin and that uh, he needs to repent. His wife has told Job, uh, why don't you just die and get it over with? Uh, Job is wondering about the presence of God and, and he lashes out in the previous chapter and he begins to accuse God of all kinds of things. And what we have here in Job 38 is uh, God's answer. And he gets kind of uh, to the point with Job. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set, or who laid its cornerstone, while the morning stars sang together, and the angels shouted for joy? Who shut up the sea behind its doors when it burst forth from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place, when I said, this far you may come and no farther, here is where your proud waves halt, have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place that it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it? The earth takes shape like clay under a seal. Its features stand out like those of a garment. The wicked are denied their light and their upraised arm is broken. Have you journeyed to the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been shown to you? Have you seen the gates of the deepest darkness? Have you comprehended the vast expanses of the earth? Tell me if you know all this. This is the word of our Lord. Our epistle readings is by the Apostle St. Paul, his 10th chapter to the Christians at Rome, beginning there at verse 5. Moses writes this about the righteousness that is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile the same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew, his 14th chapter. Matthew and Matthew, being one of the disciples in the boat, records this episode in the life of Jesus and his disciples. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there all alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, 
being buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him saying, truly, you are the son of God. This is the holy gospel of our Lord. Come on up, you bet. Oh, you can come a little closer. I don't bite. There you go. Good to see all of you. How's your summer going? Good. Good. Looking forward to school? Yeah. Yeah, some of you. If I were to ask the parents, maybe a lot of parents' hands would go up. I don't know. I know we have a sixth grader grandchild and a first grader, and the first grader is not so sure he wants to go to school, but I think he will. Yeah. Well, good morning. Good to see all of you. Have you ever needed help with something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what? My homework. Oh, your homework? I tell you what, what do you need the most help with? Math. Oh, give me a high five. You know what? I loved general math when Sue had a quarter and she could go to the store and buy apples for a nickel. How many apples could she get? I love that stuff, you see? But we, when we got into algebra and geometry, I didn't really care what X was. I still don't, all right? Yeah, I can remember, how about when you learned to ride a bicycle? Did you need help balancing? Oh, I needed, a hand. I needed a helping hand. How about learning to tie your shoes? You need help doing that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, look at I still don't wear tie shoes. No, yeah. Our little grandson, age seven, still has trouble with tying his shoes, so Papa, Grandpa, has to help him. Well, you know, we all need a helping hand once in a while. And that's what our Holy Gospel lesson was about. Jesus had just finished praying. He had sent his disciples across the Sea of Galilee in a boat, and they were rowing the boat across the lake, and all of a sudden the wind started to pick up, and instead of rowing with the wind, they were rowing against the wind, and the waves were coming in the boat, and the sail was flapping in the wind, and they were afraid they were going to sink, and then who comes to them walking on the water? Jesus! Jesus! Can you imagine him walking on the water? You think he knew where the stones were? (laughs) No, he didn't need to know where the stones were. He walked right on the water. And the disciples looked out of the boat in the darkness and said, it's a ghost, because nobody can walk on the water. Can any of you walk on the water? No. No, I can't either. I tried. You tried? Did you sink? Did you sink? Yeah, you're like Simon Peter. Yeah. Well, it's a ghost, Jesus. Don't be afraid. Take courage. It is I. And you know what Simon Peter says? Simon Peter is a fisherman. He says, Lord, if it's really you, bid me to come out in the water. Come. And he gets out of the boat, and he starts walking on the water. Can you imagine that? Who did Peter think he was? And he got a couple of feet, and all of a sudden, the wind started hitting him, and the waves splashed against his robe, and he thought, I shouldn't be doing this. And he started to sink, just like you and I sink when we try to walk on water. And what did Jesus do? Immediately, Jesus held out his hand and grabbed onto Simon Peter and pulled him up out of the water and said, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And after they all got back into the boat, what happened? The wave stopped, the lake calmed down, the wind stopped blowing because Jesus 
created the wind and the waves because he's the son of God. And the disciples all said, oh, truly, this is the son of God. Well, what can we learn from that? Well, you know what? We're all going to need help in life, learning to ride bikes, math, tying shoes, you name it. As we get older, guess what? We're going to need more help. We're going to have troubles. We're going to have to have that heart-to-heart -heart talk with mom and dad, grandpa and grandma, maybe even pastor and teacher. They are there to give us that helping hand and to keep us from drowning. They are there as God's representatives to help us. And always remember this, Jesus is always there to help us. The cross behind us reminds us how much he loved us. What did he do on that cross? Stretched out his arms and died for you and for me and for all of these people. And just think, as Jesus loved us that much, he's always going to be by our side. All right. You have been such good listeners, as I promised some of you coming in, I have a special treat for you. But first, we're going to have an uh, echo prayer. You know how to do that? I say the words, you echo them, and congregational members, please help out our young ones and Pastor Mark. Fold your hands. Let's say a little prayer. We pray, dear Jesus, thank you for helping us. No matter what, you are always there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good job. Good job. Now, don't go away because I've got a special treat for you. All right? I'm going to give you a helping hand because sometimes, you know, when you're feeling down and out or you're hot and you're tired and you just need a special treat, I don't know about you, but ice cream. <laughs> ice cream always does it for Pastor Mark. Before I went to bed last night, I had an ice cream sundae. I'm sure that's good for you when you go to sleep, but I had to have that, you see. You bet. Don't tell my doctor, all right? So I have here, it says, good for one free ice cream cone. Oh, at McDonald's. Oh, my favorite place, all right? So as you go down to mom and dad, I'm going to give you a free coupon for an ice cream cone. Make sure you get one before you go down. And as they are going down, congregation,
Once again, greetings to you in the name of our Lord and our Savior. We know and believe in him as Jesus the Christ. Amen. Gentleman out in Los Angeles made quite a name for himself. Uh, one day he decided with the help of some friends to go to a military surplus store. And there he picked up about uh, 30 of these huge helium filled balloons. Well, he got home and he, he filled up one or two and he attached them to his lawn chair and he had the neighbors strap him in. And uh, all of a sudden with two of these huge helium balloons strapped on his lawn chairs, he had some lift, you see. Well, they strapped on five or six more and they called in more neighbors to hold them down and a couple more balloons. And all, lo and behold, he had about seven or eight on each side. And he said to the neighbors, okay, let go. And they did. Well, he thought he would only go up maybe 30 or 40 feet. Yeah, he did that in about two seconds. 100 feet, 200 feet. About 15 minutes later, an airline pilot by the name of Captain Jones said, uh, LAX, uh, this is uh, Captain Jones, American Airlines Flight uh, 411. I just passed a guy in a lawn chair at 3,000 feet. <laughs> Well, the rest of the story is okay. He had a sharp stick and he poked holes in these balloons and he came down gently and landed right into the arms of the Los Angeles Fire and Police Department. <laughs> well, of course, the question they had to ask was, why? Why? <laughs> why would you do something like this? Uh, and his answer was kind of interesting. He said, sometimes you just got to do something. Sometimes you just got to do something. I wonder if that's what Simon Peter was thinking in that boat. Jesus had just fed the 5,000 with the help of his, his disciples. They had picked up how many baskets of scraps? 12. And these weren't little uh, longer burger baskets. These were those baskets that my Uncle Bill used to throw the silage down. They were huge baskets, about maybe four feet tall, and he'd haul those and he'd feed the cows with that silage. These were huge baskets, you see. One basket for every one of the disciples that said, send them home. Send them to McDonald's. We don't have enough to feed them. Jesus fed the 5,000. He was mourning the death of his cousin, John the Baptist, who was beheaded. He needed some time to grieve. So he sent the disciples in a boat across the Sea of Galilee. That was one of my favorite places in the Holy Land because the guide couldn't say, this is allegedly the Sea of Galilee. No, it actually was. I stepped in the water and I, bathed in the water and I was baptized in the water of the Sea of Galilee just like Jesus would have been there. Well, he sent the disciples across the Sea of Galilee and uh, he needed some time to pray up on the mountainside. So as he was praying, it got to be about three, four, five in the morning just before sunrise during the fourth watch of the Roman uh, soldiers. And all of a sudden he decides, you know, well, the disciples are in trouble because the wind has picked up and the Sea of Galilee gets kind of rough. So he starts by walking out to them on the water. Miracle in itself. The disciples see this and of course they're afraid. It's a ghost. They're scared anyhow because their boat is maybe taken on water. It's a ghost. Jesus calms them by saying, no, take courage. It is I. Remember that. The Greek ego imi. It is I. Remember that? Because we're going to summarize the whole sermon at the end with those two words. Lord, Peter says, sometimes you got to do something. Maybe you said it out of fear. I, not something I'd say. Lord, if it's you, bid me to come out on the water. Are you crazy? Not my thought. Come. Peter gets up out of the boat, starts walking on the water. Sometimes you just got to do something. Wall Street Journal some time ago published an article about those who succeed. And it says most people don't succeed because they're afraid to take risks. They're afraid to play it safe. 
They live nice, quiet, decent lives. They obey the Ten Commandments. They try to be good to their neighbor, but they just don't want to step out of that boat. And the Wall Street Journal says, if you don't take that step to achieve, you'll never soar. Life will only be boring. Maybe Peter really wanted to soar because, you know, he had a way of getting into trouble. When they were at Caesarea Philippi, Jesus says, who do you say that I am? All the other disciples looked at one another. Remember, Peter said, you're the Christ. You're the Son of God. You're right, Peter. And upon that confession of faith, I will build my church from now on. That is the rock of the church. We worship at St. Peter's Church, right off the Sea of Galilee. In the Garden of Gethsemane, all the other disciples ran. In fact, St. Mark ran so fast, the, the temple guard ripped his clothes right off. He was one of the first streakers in the New Testament. Read Mark's Gospel. Yeah. Peter took his sword out, and he lashed at the high servant Malchus and cut off his ear. Peter put his action where his mouth was. Sometimes more is said than done, especially in the church. Sometimes you got to do something. Second thing we can learn from the text is Peter was okay. He was walking on that water, wasn't he? Until he took his eyes off of Jesus. Once you lose that focus in life, everything gets messed up. Your priorities change. And instead of focusing on Jesus and what he has done for us and what he wants us to do for one another, everything gets mixed up and we go the way of the world and we forget all about our mission and our purpose in life. God has blessed and called us. He has redeemed us so that we who are forgiven might love and forgive those around us in every kind of way. In the gospel, he says, go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And sometimes, you know, even in the church, we get detoured from what God would have us to do. You know, they don't teach us a lot at the seminary about church politics. I'll never forget my first church in Little Jasper, Minnesota. I was there a couple of years, and it was an old church, but the people were so proud of that church, just as you are here, and they kept it up. If something was to be done in that farm community, they'd have a special voters meeting, and, and they'd get it done. I'll, I'll never forget the very first Sunday I was installed in this little congregation of about 300 strong, uh, the, one of the ushers, I thought he was an usher, he was my treasurer, comes to me before the service and says, uh, Pastor, we're going to have two offerings today. That's unheard of in the Lutheran church. I said, do you want me to get stoned on my first Sunday? No, he says, I'll explain. So he says, we took the first offering. I thought, well, this went well. After the first offering, just before the closing hymn, this guy gets up at the lectern and he says, well, folks, he says, it costs us a little more to get Pastor and Mrs. Krieger here, so we're going to have another uh, offering to fill up the checkbook. <laughs> sure, blame me, right? <laughs> and they did it. They did it. But I'll never forget, we were growing and we were uh, experiencing some growth problems, and that church had an old... A set of steps, there must have been 30, 40 steps that went up to the old oak doors. And in winter, because it faced north, you could not use those steps. And people were falling. So we had an architect in our property committee, uh, drew some plans, and they had a guy coming in. We were going to extend that narthex because you couldn't even get a casket into the church. We were going to extend that narthex, get rid of those stamps, and, and put in a nice ramp. Well, you know, we did our homework. We educated the people. The night of the special voters meeting came. Uh, everything was going well. I felt confident that this was going to pass and that the church was going to grow and be beautified. One member, a patriarch of the church. His family had been there for years. In fact, they probably started the church got up after all was said and done and said, you know, he says, I'm all for this, but he says, you know, we support this church pretty, pretty regularly, and it's starting to take food off our table, and if it starts to take food off our table, that's when I say we gotta put an end to this, enough is enough. Nobody went and challenged him. It lost by two votes. Why? Well, 
maybe it was meant to be, but now that church still has those steps. I preached there for the 125th. That church that had 300, 400 people now is down to 15. They don't have a full-time pastor. And pretty soon, like the rest of those little country churches, they could have closed their doors. I'm not saying that because they didn't pass that steps and that ramp. I'm just saying maybe down the road, they, like all of us, took our focus off of our Lord and Savior. Sometimes you gotta do something. You always have to keep your focus on Jesus. And by the way, that is the success of a fulfilled Christian life. Knowing that no matter what happens, Jesus is always there. You know, we go through some pretty rough times and we thank God for pastors and teachers and doctors and nurses and counselors. They are there as God's representatives to help us to focus on what's really important. A classmate of mine took some time off in upstate New York one day on a, on a day off on Monday and he took a train ride upstate and when he got on the train, it was pretty full, and he sat next to a gal that really was depressed, and he tried to start a conversation, and finally he, he turned to the gal and says, you know, what's bothering you? And she started crying, and she said, well, I just lost my disabled daughter, and I don't think life is worth living. Well, why would you say that? Well, I'd get up in the morning, and I'd fix her breakfast, and I'd pack her lunch, and I'd get her settled in. The, the care person would come and take care of her. I'd come home in the evening, I'd say, Hello, dear, and we talk about the day, and even though she couldn't always communicate, there was, I always knew that she'd be there, and now that she's gone, I have nothing to live for. And the pastor looked at this gal and says, why don't you try this? When you get up in the morning, thank Jesus for a restful night's sleep. Talk to Jesus like you would talk to that daughter. When you get home in the evening, put that key in the door and say, Jesus, I'm home. Share with him all of your thoughts, all of your concerns, all of your problems. Treat Jesus as you would have treated that daughter and know for sure that your daughter, because she believed, is in the home of our Lord. Without any pain, she's all healed. Feel the presence of our Lord. But a month later, that pastor decided to go back to upstate New York, and wouldn't you know it, that same gal was there, you wouldn't have known her. She was clean, she had her hair done, she was smiling, she was handing out tracts on the train. Are you the same person? She says, Pastor, I took your advice. I know that Jesus is with me no matter what happens, and I am with him. My focus is on him. That's the secret of a fulfilled Christian life. When the disciples got back into the boat, the wind and the waves stopped. They were amazed and they said, who is this guy? Truly, he is the Son of God. He was the great I am, that one who created the wind and the waves and the earth and the sky and the seas. That I am is with us, the bread of life, the living water, the vine and the branches, the alpha and the omega. He is right here and we call upon him. And as we call upon him, we feel his strength. Our focus is on him and what he would have us to do. May God help us always to be strengthened in our faith, to remove our fears and our doubts, and to call upon Jesus, the great I am alone. Amen. And now may this peace of God that passes our human understandings Keep our hearts and minds firmly rooted in Jesus the Christ alone. Amen. Heavenly Father, through the Holy Gospel lesson, we are reminded that the true Christian life is to be focused upon you, your presence, your love, and your forgiveness. Help us to remove all doubts and amidst our fear to call upon you and you alone. So, Heavenly Father, we call upon you for those who are in need of a healing touch. For your servants, Shirley Bray, Pastor David Faulkner, Doreen Fuller, Phyllis Goodlett, Brad Hofferman, Betty Plath, Amy Rogenbauer, and Shirley Satorius, Charlene Schrader, and Lorraine Seaman, Christine Soflarski, and Lila Wenzel. A special prayer for Tim Langfeld who will undergo surgery this coming week. Be with all of these, your servants, through that the doctors, nurses, and others 
can show them the healing presence of our Lord and Savior. Remind them the great I am is always by their side. We pray for our children of compassion, Itzel Matus and Mary Johnson. We pray for those in our armed forces, for Aaron and Daniel and CJ, for Pat and Joshua, Johnny and Dan, Radley and Troy and Anthony. Continue, Lord, to be with those who serve and protect servicemen and women, our fire and police protection, and all those who are willing to lay down their life for us and for others. We pray for our missionaries that we support, Matthew and Heather in Puerto Rico, Kip and Ivy in Kyrgyzstan, Ted and Rebecca and Danielle in the Dominican Republic. Continue to give them the strength to go out boldly to proclaim the wonders and the miracles of our Heavenly Father. We pray for Emmanuel Lutheran Church and school. May she always be that beacon of light in our community, in our world, and in our area. That they may always proclaim focused the love and the presence of Jesus the Christ. Bless the teachers, pastor, and staff as they prepare for another academic year. May they feel your Holy Spirit moving among them. We give thanks to you for those who rejoice, those who have birthdays, those who have anniversaries. We pray for those baptized this weekend. Last night, little Logan Joseph Hoffenbradel, and this morning, little Owen Mark Zelinsky, and following our service, Everly Rose Garby. Continue, Lord Jesus, to be with these children and to be with their parents. May they, along with us, always know and feel your divine presence and guidance. All of this we summarize in the name and for the sake of Jesus the Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, you give us time, talents, treasures, our bodies as your holy temples. We thank you for giving us all of these gifts, but continue to remind us that all we have, O oh Lord, is but a gift from you. We are but stewards managers of all that entrusted into our care and keeping. So continue to bless us that we can use your gifts with strength and with guidance through Jesus the Christ we pray, amen. We'll have a brief prayer and then the benediction. Gracious Father, once again, you have called and gathered us together as your people. We have seen the example of our Lord and his disciples, especially one, Simon Peter, somebody we'll never forget, someone who just had to do something, even though he doubted and his faith gave way to sinking, you were there. Enable us to take that leap of faith and to know that no matter what, you will be there to immediately save us as you have already through the empty cross and the empty tomb. May that be our hope and may you always be our focus. In your name, O oh Lord, we pray. Amen. And now receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord look upon us with favor and the Lord give us his peace.